Maybe you think you've seen it all when it comes to 3D printed construction, but I can promise you it's just getting started. In this video, we're going to look at double head extruders, off-site printed construction, and a 3D printed building in Ukraine from start to finish, all the way from the warehouse to on-site. Concrete Flow Tech did an amazing job providing me with footage to make this video with. They captured so many of the critical details and it was so easy to put this together when they were so thoughtful in the videos they were able to capture and send over to me. I'm always eager to feature new and exciting concrete printing companies. That's the main focus of my channel so that the world can one day reach construction automation. I never take money from companies that make or sell concrete printers, so you can trust you're getting my unbiased journalistic opinion. Instead of sales commissions for printers, my operation is fully supported by the Automation Nation and my course, How to 3D Print a House. Check those out in the link in the description, but more on that later. Let's get back into this. As you've probably noticed by now, Concrete Flow Tech is using a dual head extruder. They're using one gantry system, one mixer pump system, and it all flows down into a split section where you can double the output of your system. While the concrete's printed, they're able to manually place some reinforcements. In most cases, they place reinforcements every 12 layers or so. That number varies depending on the material and the team. I'm not sure exactly what regimen Concrete Flow Tech follows, but it is pretty incredible just to see how many pieces they're able to fit on the production line. And this is just the beginning. By placing plastic in between each row, they can let a layer cure, leave it in place, and print more on top, utilizing the entire print volume. When it comes to off-site printing, this is probably the best utility of the print volume I've ever seen. They built the printer themselves, and they do have it for sale. You can go to their website at the link in the description and contact them if you're interested. Now, before they can bring all of their printed elements on site, they have to prepare the site with footings. And I think they use some upcycled lumber to prepare those footings. Here's the pouring of the foundation for the home. It's basically identical to cinder block construction. Sometimes it's a little bit beefier. In an area with a frost region, you typically always want to make sure it's below the frost line. After a bite to eat, the concrete's cured and they're preparing the ground, tamping the gravel. Notice the rebar sticking up from the bottom. This is where the columns will tie into the slab. This gives you vertical structural integrity. Check out how nicely these pieces fit stacked onto a pallet and then covered in saran wrap for ease of transport. Whenever you're moving this quantity of materials, there's typically some amount of breakage in the process. I wonder how many of these panels arrived in the quality they were supposed to. I'm sure by the last one they became very efficient at moving them. There's quite a few pallets. When you're putting them together, it's very similar to CMU or a cinder block unit with mortar in between each segment. You can tell the inner and outer sections are joined by a piece of tiny thin rebar. Fully assembled, some patterns begin to emerge and it looks quite nice. There's also limitless possibility in the curves and angles the printer can take so you can come up with all kinds of custom designs. Notice how the concrete is not touching from the inner to outer layer. This means you are eliminating the concrete cold joint and instead you only have the rebar cold joint. It's always best to avoid cold joints as much as possible in construction of a home because they decrease your insulation factor and increase the amount of energy required to heat or cool the home. I can imagine your electricians and plumbers really appreciate the extra space in between those two layers compared to cinder blocks. It's also great because more space between the inner and outer walls means more insulation, increasing your R value. On this channel, we're all about robotics and automation, but we also have a huge appreciation for the people that make it possible. I've never seen a robot that can build a house without a person's help. And these people are clearly implementing tremendous skill in leveling each of these blocks. By now you may have noticed those thinner walls on the sides that are also printed in concrete. Concrete Flow Tech installed these as well and it's a different design than the home walls obviously. But it looks nice and the whole thing is going to have a very cohesive look. 
Now back to what I was talking about with the labor and people in the workforce. Young people aren't going into blue collar jobs as much as they used to. And that's why there's such a need for robotics in construction. Without a solution, housing is going to become increasingly unattainable. So that's why it's critical people put their best effort into coming up with construction automation solutions before it's too late. Concrete is one of the most widely used materials in the world, and with so many uses, the methods to build it and make it need to be very different depending on the use case. That's why I think we'll continue to see an explosion in the number of printers and automation methods for concrete and other construction materials that can be used to reduce human labor on the job site. Teams like Concrete Flowtech that do things completely differently from all the other teams are my favorite because that means they're pushing the boundaries, trying new things, as opposed to just copying what was done before them. The future of construction is going to look tremendously different than it does today, and that's why I have the most faith in the teams which are trying new things. They'll continue to push the cutting edge into new places. I believe this is the first project of this size completed by Concrete Flowtech, so I would be very curious to know if there's anything they would do differently. Maybe adjust the size of the pieces, make them bigger, smaller. In a country like Ukraine, which has been experiencing a lot of supply chain issues, having your own ability to manufacture can be critical at times. And so by having control over their materials, all they need is the concrete and then they can create the cinder blocks or elements without having to rely on some big factory far away. To me and you, the printers might sound expensive, but in the world of construction equipment, they're actually very reasonably priced. Check out how this corner piece is designed. It's pretty cool how these pieces are all like big Legos in a way. You've got to be pretty smart to put the logistics together so that each pallet is unloaded and the pieces are going into a similar area. Ultimately, tasks like this could be completed with automation, but in the early stages, often these challenging puzzles are completed by hand. There are even some teams which would write their G-code by hand, which in the modern era of slicing in 3D printing, to many groups would seem unheard of. People talk about concrete printers making the job site easier, but to be honest, that's not always the case. Sometimes with an on-site printer, it can become very stressful keeping up with the pace of the print. It doesn't take breaks, so if your team is used to working on their time, it can be challenging to adjust to working on the printer's time. Any time that is downtime or pauses, which can cause clogs in the hose, have to be avoided at all costs. On this job, however, the crew can kind of take their time. They're not waiting on the elements to dry, and the only time concerning element is the mortar, which is only placed in small sections and mixed in small batches at a time. That being said, on-site printing can be a breeze for experienced teams. Generally, after their third or fourth print, operators are confident enough to sit back and enjoy a bag of chips or have a sandwich while the print is going well. A well-ironed team could have a clog or material malfunction during the print, remedy the whole thing in about 60 seconds, and you may never be the wiser. Now let's talk about structural engineering. Typically, to win your structural permits, you'll need something besides the printed concrete for the vertical load of the roof. Concrete Flowtech is using sonotube or these cardboard columns which can be inserted into and over the rebar that we saw earlier sticking out of the slab. Then you put a rebar cage inside of the column and tie it to the slab, filling it up with concrete afterwards. This creates what's known as in the industry as an RC or a reinforced column. It's a very commonly used structural element on the job site and it's very easy for engineers to calculate and comprehend exactly what kind of structural integrity it has as opposed to 3D printed concrete where the mix can change layer to layer and the structural calculations can be very challenging to certify. One day I hope some material or process can be certified that eliminates the need for this manually inserted rebar or columns but for now this is the best way to go about it 
especially because it generally doesn't require any special permitting beyond the current standards. I wonder how the neighbors feel about living near one of the first 3D printed homes in the area. Look how unique it seems all put together and it doesn't even have windows or a roof yet. It actually reminds me of one of the very first videos on my channel where I toured some of the Winsun villas in China. It's interesting that they chose to use regular block for the interior walls. I wonder what prompted them to make this decision. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with all the latest construction, automation, news and content. And if you want to learn more about 3D printed houses, check out my course in the description below. It's a fast track to everything you need to know to decide which printer and team is right for you. Along with a breakdown of the material science and physics on a basic level that anybody can understand. My goal is to contribute as much as I can to spreading the word about construction automation and so my best resource for learning is completely free, the Automate Construction Podcast where I've had on 60 plus CEOs and founders of construction technology companies around the world.